This video is going to be about Jen's 2004 Honda Civic that doesn't move anymore, no matter what gear, forward or reverse. And you can see it's been sitting a little bit, the rotors are rusting up. So this is actually her first car and she, she wants to repair it. Now let me show you the, the symptoms, we'll talk a little bit and then figure out what's going on. Hopefully it fires right up. We got 163,900 miles, which is like nothing. We shouldn't be having transmission problems. All right. We do have an engine light. We can scan those codes, see what's going on. But uh, with it cold right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in gear. Let's put it in reverse. And there's just, I didn't feel any engagement. It's like it's in neutral. Actually, I feel it rocking a little bit backwards. I'm not even gonna put my foot on the brake. Let's go to neutral and then drive. And same deal, just nothing. Actually, that's kind of a bummer because I was hoping to limp this into the yard. It did move a little bit before. Yep, I'm just leave it park, let it warm up. I was just double checking the transmission fluid right up to level, actually a touch overfilled. And listen to this noise. You guys hear that high-pitched whine? Uh, I don't remember it ever making that noise before, but uh, who knows, maybe it's just a stuck open solenoid or something. Uh, something simple. That'd be nice, right? I don't think you can see this too well, but we got a P0700 automatic transmission system malfunction and a P0730 incorrect gear ratio. Bad news, I just looked up that code on some forums and it seems the most common problem is slipping clutches within the transmission, indicating it needs a rebuild. It seems to be kind of a death sentence code for these transmissions. Uh, but the good news is that I've got it in drive now and kind of just sitting here warmed up. It wants to move a little bit, so maybe we can just pull it out back, slipping those clutches even worse. Then, all right, yeah, that's, it, it felt like it grabbed a little bit better, but I don't think we're gonna make it up the driveway here. Many hours later, we are in the garage with the Civic. Ended up spending, geez, probably five hours cleaning stuff up and organizing. I got all my tools organized on this pegboard. Been meaning to do that for a little bit. The stuff that doesn't make sense to put in the box. And I uh, got my first prototype stand for the handy lift. Kind of butched it up actually. But anyway, let's start with draining the oil and see what comes out of it. The trans fluid that is. Yes, we will do this. Always gotta do the quick shakedown. And the tire pressure. At first, a bunch of gray metal came out. And I got this filter here in case anything huge comes out of there, but uh, yeah, quite a bit of material on this plug. Oof, it's not good. Yep, smells pretty burnt too. And I don't know if you could see the oil over there, but it's pretty dark as well. She's never changed it before, so. But otherwise clean, no big chunks. Next step was getting some access in here. So you gotta take the battery out and the air box sound reducer. Real simple, you know, disconnect your battery negative terminal first. And then underneath that you have the plastic tray. And then this little steel one, it's two 12 millimeters. And on the bottom, you also have to loosen two 12 millimeters, but you don't have to remove them from the body. You just leave them in there. And you got one, two, three, four, five 10 millimeter heads on this. Pop that off. It gives us plenty of access. And at this point, if you have a pressure washer handy and you don't mind blowing all this grime everywhere, definitely go hit this up with some degreaser and clean it. You know, if the car still drives, bring it down to the car wash because it's uh, trying to scrape all this crud off. You know, not fun. And just not as easy but there's uh two of the solenoids shift solenoids and of course take your wheel off so we can access the bottom you got two more behind there so i'm gonna get that all cleaned up pop those off and uh you know there's only two wire connections so i assume we can easily check that those on a positive note i did find the coolant bottle cap sitting under here that's a nice score now here's what we got. I've tested all the solenoids and they seem to be working. 
These two down below, all I gotta do is ground out the chassis somewhere with a power probe or whatever you're using, and then hit positive on each one of these pins in this connector, and that operates each solenoid. They're clicking, and they seem to be working fine. Now, the other six 10 millimeter head bolts, again, it'd be a great idea to pressure wash this all. I tried to clean up a little bit around it, but a lot of crud on that transmission. You don't want it getting inside, and this is what that solenoid pack looks like. There's a screen, doesn't have any debris at all. And I applied ground and power to each of these. They're clicking, you can feel them positively engaging. And then the torque converter lockup solenoid, same deal on this one. That's located right underneath, uh, this, I guess it's the thermostat housing, or right under the, there, right where I'm pointing. One 10 millimeter head bolt, and you can physically see it operating back and forth. Here's a look at testing it. You can hear it and you can see the little rod moving back and forth. Now, I thought maybe I'd get lucky and one of them wasn't working, but here's the thing. Her trans was slipping for quite some time, so even if it was a bad solenoid, I think the trans is shot at this point. Plus, it didn't throw any codes. Usually, if you have a bad torque converter solenoid, it's going to throw a code for that. Uh, so, you saw how much crud was on the drain plug. I'm guessing that even if it was something electronically wrong with the trans, it's shot now or the filter's probably clogged inside. For when I was reading online, these have an internal screen and with what you saw on that drain plug, yeah, how dark the fluid is, it's done for. So two methods to pull this trans. One is out the bottom, you gotta drop the subframe in the front and you're gonna need alignment when you're done too. There's a lot of rusted stuff down there on that. So I think I'm gonna go with the other method of just pulling the whole motor and trans out the top. And uh, I'll see you uh, see after that. I forget if I mentioned in this video, but we do have a good used donor transmission. I'm told it's good. It came out of a wrecked Civic that had around 150K. And you know, my better judgment says do not put a used transmission that you haven't tried out first inside of a vehicle. But uh, yeah, because labor is not free. I did kind of get this for free though, because we traded the Ford Aerostar we got this and a few hundred dollars for it. So, kind of a freebie, right? Uh, I was hoping maybe we'd just take some solenoids off of this one for now and keep it. Update, uh, me being me, I said, let's mess with this a little bit more before we pull it. So on a whim, I just grabbed some diesel, poured it in there, I got the, the trans up to level, fired it up, and I took off this hose right here, the one on the passenger side for the cooler. And surprisingly, I was getting barely any flow out of that hose. Like, it should be a pretty steady stream coming out of there going to the cooler, uh, whether in park or gear. It was flowing, but but not a lot. <clears throat> so, I then uh, shut it off and took this air gun, and I blew up into that real hard, filled the trance with pressure, uh, and gurgling all these noises coming out of it. I'm not saying to do this at home, guys. I'm just saying what I did, uh, because I'm thinking, non-serviceable filter inside of it and you saw what was on the drain plug it must probably be plugged solid and, and that whine you guys hear when it's running that would be indication of a pump starving not getting enough oil so i blew in reverse and now i just started it back up and check it out it is flowing like crazy in this video we're kind of just documenting what what i'm finding with this but look at that stream coming out of there now holy smokes so I'm actually going to let that run completely dry, pump out all the ATF and diesel, because of course even though I had drained this, the torque converter is still full and the whole system is full of ATF. So that's now mixed in with diesel. We're going to let that flow out completely. I think it's some ATF in here. Probably some junk stuff. Um, whatever I got on the wall and then, you know, the, the multi import. And then we'll get some Honda fluid in here. There we go. It. That's run dry. The idea here is we're trying to back flush that filter screen or whatever the heck's in there, get it, the junk back in the trans, and then you know get what we can drained out and washed away with the diesel. Because of course the, the diesel's gonna do a lot better of a job getting that, that crud out of there. Yeah, fair bit more material back on the plug, so that's a good sign. I'm actually really excited to fill this back with ATF and go drive it. Fingers crossed. 
Because, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the easy, easy way out on this job, guys. Well, I did just use all the junk ATF I had kicking around. It's all new, but we got a mixture of uh, a lot of things in there. However, now when we put it in gear, check it out. It's reversed. Nice solid engagement. Give it a little gas. Oh, yeah. It's grabbing hard and drive. Nice engagement. Give it a little gas. It's not chattering. It was actually chattering before uh, when I had the diesel mix in there, but if I give it a little gas, see that bangs us up to speed. Oh, well, I guess nice fourth gear, 65 mile an hour. I guess uh, we'll go take a first spin and see if it slips really bad still. Feels good. Well, to say the least, I am stoked. Look at this. This is driving like a brand new Civic, shifting absolutely flawlessly. Now, I think we're gonna go hit the highway, give it a good run, and pick up some OEM Honda fluid at the dealership. Cruising at speed like a little cream puff. I think it's shifting smoother than it ever has in, in this thing's life. Mash the throttle, downshifts nice and smooth. No slipping, feels really good. Well, off to the dealer, get some ATF DW1 is what they said this calls for. I thought it was the, the ATF Z, Z1, right? But DW1, whatever. And I did look online too, and it's not really saving much by buying the fluid online. It's, it's like $10 a quart here, and that same price online from places I looked. Stop it, Mike Piazza Honda. This actually used to be a Volkswagen, uh, well, it was a Pit Karen Volkswagen. Now it's Piazza, Piazza Volkswagen, but my father worked here. I remember seeing this building when I was a kid, and they still got the same steel building. So those things hold up pretty good. Check that out. They got mini splits now, though. Well, I don't know if that is a mini split. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look at this thing. Wow, holding up good. All those years. Back home, and I'm gonna call that fixed for now. Did one more fluid change. Three and a half quarts came out. Topped her off with a DW1. Did an oil change on it too with an OEM Honda filter made in USA. Only nine bucks at the dealership, not too bad. So time will tell how this holds up and uh, I guess I'll wait a little bit before posting this to make sure. But yeah, it seems to be banging the gears nice and hard, smooth, no slipping. Cruises down the highway fine, and I'm really glad I didn't go pulling that transmission out. So if you have one of these Hondas and it's slipping, and you don't have an engine light, uh, change your fluid. And maybe try that back flush technique, or who knows, if you go on a forum, there might be a better way of doing it. I didn't do any research, I just kind of dove right into this. A uh, couple forums I, I jumped on for some ideas. Oh, look at that, look at this hose, or uh, cable tucked back there. But anyway, hopefully this helps you rectify your issue in your Honda. And uh, shame on Honda for not having a pan with a pickup filter. Like, it just seems kind of stupid to me. Well, so I'll have to maybe, uh, I'm thinking if we put the other one, the other transmission we have in this down the line, we'll see how long this one lasts. Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna split the cases on that first and check the pickup screen because that, that fluid's pretty brown too on that uh, used trans out there. Uh, anyway, appreciate you guys tuning in. I know this was, uh, wasn't was much, but it's kind of the old style, no nonsense, know how video where I just try to bring some information to the table that may or may not help you. Thanks for watching. See you in another video soon. No nonsense, know how. Stopping in one of my favorite places, Dominic's, and I'm look, looking at this sign and I'm like, I'm six foot three, so my head's up there. Is this dirty or what's going on? And I look up close and no, it's actually an old piece of Formica that they, they painted that on. The artist, maybe you guys know him, John Mobza's Enable. Very cool.